All right, welcome back to another episode. Today I am with another sewing queen, Adrian Gonzalez. And Adrian is in the Phoenix area. I'm sure if you're like in our seamstress community, you know her, you love her. She's also a, an educator um, for us sewists. So Adrian, thank you so much for being here. Woohoo! I'm super excited. We have um, we have a lot to talk about. So we were just talking so much before we hit record, and we're like, okay. We need to like save it all for the episode. So let's get started with you telling us about your gig in Phoenix and how you got there. Awesome. So what I'm currently doing is kind of a blend of things. I work for a bridal shop doing in-house alterations and repairs and taking care of their brides. And then I take a couple little handful of gals on my own. Um, I just had a baby recently. So I just do a handful of oh, things. And congratulations. Thank you. Um, so that's definitely helped me figure out my personal and professional boundaries right. because I would much rather hang out with my kid right now. <laughs> so it's really helped me figure out like what I want to take and what I don't want to take. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's been a long road to get to this point. So um, I remember you had asked when I had started and everybody was asked because I still look kind of youngish, which I'm like, thank 100%. you. I, I know. Yes. Um, so I'll be it's funny you like said that I just started using Mary Kay and yes. it's kind of a game changer because once I turned, okay, I will get, once I turned, uh, I, I believe it was 32 was the year that I was like, oh gosh, things are changing. And so mm -hmm. I had to up my game, but the creams are really working. So I'm like four years in and it's doing the trick. The so cream you, work. My older sister gave me a cream when I was like 20 something. And she's like, just start using it now. You need this. Yes. Either. You look awesome. So go so, on. You don't even need to tell us your age. It can be a mystery. <laughs> my whole sewing career, people are like, how old are you though? And I'm like, mm -hmm. first of all, that's not an indicator of your skills, but that's right. fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's another soapbox. <laughs> that's another soapbox. Yeah. Um, I, I'm waiting for some wrinkles to show people that I know how to sew. I don't know. <laughs> your proof. <laughs> yeah. My proof. So, um, but no, I've been sewing for a really, really long time. And, um, I had a really great lady who, uh, more or less gave me an apprenticeship at her, um, dry cleaning shop. So we took in every Oh, day. wow. Yeah. Dry we cleaning. Took in vacuum bag zippers. We took in cleaning car rugs. We took in, I saw all kinds of stuff. Uh, everything. Oh my word. Imagine the so, skills that you picked up there though. Oh my gosh. So, fun. so she taught me a lot of really awesome skills about, uh, very informally on business, how to run, how not to run. Mm -hmm. um, we saw all the different scenarios and uh, it was a really great, I, I say apprenticeship loosely because it was kind of crash course. Some of it was really like you're learning as you go, but she taught me that there's nothing you can't figure out in a week. And Ooh. that was like, super dangerous to teach me at 19 because I was like yes. okay <laughs> there's nothing I can't figure out in a week so sometimes we took stuff that like I probably shouldn't have taken but yeah. you know we figured it out people were happy with the quality so I was yeah. like okay cool that's that's done yes. yeah now I know how to do that thing but wow. um yeah that's so I totally was, filled your toolbox like at 19 I because we you know we hear of some people who've gone to like design school or like have, have studied, you know, costuming or have this like specific niche, which is, you know, awesome and always can be applied to bridal in really great ways. But the fact that you can, if you can do like a vacuum bag, I feel like that's a whole new level. And yeah. <laughs> like, I think still stuck if, on anything, that. if anything, it just communicated to me how, well, I mean, shoot, I could do a whole on how everything she taught me, just like conceptually that if you want to work hard, there's always money out there. Mm -hmm. She took everything. So there was nothing oh. we leaving money on the table anywhere. Now, not all of it was good money. I've learned now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to hustle after carpet for cars anymore, <laughs> but like, I know if, if things get tight, I know how to do that. And I can go make up some money that way. Wow. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, I know a lot of people are nervous to, to start working in alterations in mm -hmm. any level because they don't have education on it. And I have a degree, but it's in, it's in design from the college of architecture and environmental design. So like we all get to where we are from like different angles and it doesn't right. make it more or less valuable. It's just, if you're willing to collect all those experiences, everything relates to each other so mm -hmm. heavily. Oh, so yeah. like my, 100%. my love of stain removal started. <laughs> 
from them. <laughs> oh, that's the first. My love of stain removal. My love of stain removal. It's so fun getting yeah. a sting out, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. That's totally just me, but that's fine. It works. Yeah, for title me. yeah. <laughs> I know. And I think I was really um, just being a self-taught. Well, and we use the term self-taught loosely because you actually learn from like educators, right? Who wrote the books mm -hmm. and who have the YouTube channels and all those things. But like, um, sometimes in certain circles, it can kind of be like, Ooh, don't admit that out loud that you're self-taught, but it's like, you just, you like you, I love how you said you collect all these pieces and it's like, everything does relate. And I think at the end of the day, it is really like experience. And if kind of, you have it, you do. And if you don't, you don't, you know what I'm saying? And if, yeah. we, if we let that kind of get in the way of like, okay, I don't have the degree or I don't have the, I don't know. It can be super debilitating. Yeah. And it's great that there are educational things you can do to mm -hmm. learn the business aspect, to learn more details of sewing. But if you're not learning from every angle, mm -hmm. then you're really doing yourself a disservice because yeah, I'm okay. So I, I love making furniture. There's details of furniture making that I apply to wow, sewing. Oh, that's awesome. And like yeah. cake decorating, like there's stuff to learn and apply other places everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, and I think people might do that kind of without thinking about it but if you do it purposely it's like oh that's how I can do that facing on that neckline yes. if I do it like this cabinet corner yes whatever, yeah you know? yeah that's so funny because my dad so my dad's recently retired and so he helped me build this like dream chicken run we recently got chickens that's a whole thing and um we have five of them and they're super spoiled okay we're totally getting off track but it's okay we'll come back we'll come back in a minute it's all so, really <laughs> Exactly. So my dad graciously helped me build like my dream chicken run and he can do this without a plan. Like he's just amazing, an amazing carpenter. And it wasn't his trade. It was just a hobby and working with him. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're using the same stuff. Like, and that, and the more that I like do these projects with him, the more I'm thinking, okay, you're where I got this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we're using the same side of our brains here. So, okay. Yeah. I, when did you get into bridal then? When did you decide that was your thing? Oh, it's so hilarious. I always, <laughs> I honestly avoided bridal for a very long time. Oh, intriguing. Yes. I avoided it for a long time because I was not where I am now with um, my people skills. Mm. And it took a lot of years of getting thick skin to learn how to handle customers better. Um, I've worked retail for a very long time now. So that gave me a lot of information there. Um, I've worked in a, a professional office. I've worked in a warehouse. I've learned how to talk to all kinds of people. Yeah. And that really helped me so much to embrace the fact that my skill set really is best suited for bridal. Yeah. Um, because it's so you know, hard it's, to wrap my head around because I feel like you're so <laughs> like effervescent and you put people at ease. And to, so to think that that was a skill that you had to learn kind of is like, oh. Wow. That's shocking. Yeah. You learned it. Well, very well. And it's, <laughs> um, it's one of those things, like it's, it's a lot of energy. I mean, I think, I think the one thing all of us seamstresses have in common is that we all are so like full of heart. We want to help people. Mm -hmm. And when you put that much of yourself out there, it can, it can hurt when things go wrong. So hundred oh, percent. part of why I avoided it, it was, I was like, man, the risk and the reward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. weren't always matching up. So as I got older, stronger, thicker, faster, all those good things, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I can step up to this level and confidently, um, you know, explain what we're doing, guide the bride through the process versus before I was like, what would you like? Like I was taking their order down at a restaurant right? versus now I'm like, here's what are your options are. Let's go through everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. You have I just, I don't know. I bring, I bring more of myself to the table now, which right. um, feels really good. It doesn't feel anything like what I, yeah. you know, when I was first learning bridal, I was very like backseat a little bit watching yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. So. Cause I, I, I wanted to ask like when you, and this is kind of a vague statement, but I, I want to focus on um, talking to you about like systems and how you use your time. Well, those are things that like we learn, obviously, as we like the longer we're doing this, you know, we pick up new skills along the way. And those skills aren't always sewing. A lot of the time it's like, here's how to save time or how to be more efficient. And so when you first started, like in addition to, I guess, like the, the people skills, whatever, are there things that, um, 
as you were working or communicating with brides, like specifically was a challenge and then what was going really well, like clicking right away. And then what were some other things that you're like, oh yeah, that I really had to iron out like those wrinkles. So I think one of the number one things for me, um, was just building a strong sense of my gut. Mm. Um, there are so many times we don't listen to the red flags that our body is telling us. If you're getting sweaty, your body's trying to communicate to you that you need to slow down and pay attention to something. Yes. Yeah. And um, so for me, anytime something has gone wrong, it's inspired a new policy or a new procedure or something like that. If I'm stressed out, I'm like, okay, why am I stressed out? What has happened here? And that's usually what will inspire me to make a new habit because something's not working. Yes. Um, yeah. So I used to be really, really accessible to all of my clients all the time when I was early on in my business. Um, I would sleep with my phone like under my pillow or next to my pillow. And I had some clients that would message me at two or three in the morning if they had an idea. And I would respond. I would respond to them. Oh, <gasps> I just almost fell off my chair. <laughs> I know. So I was very in that, I don't want to say desperate, but I was very eager to be helpful to them. Right. I think that's, that's at, where it comes from. Yep. Yeah. At the risk of my own sleep. Mm -hmm. and that was good for me to learn because that was uncomfortable and I don't need to provide that kind of, that's not even customer service. That's like, I would never expect anybody to give that level of service because right. that's like ridiculous. Yeah. So I made a rule and it, it changes over the time. Cause I didn't just like all of a sudden stop talking to people or whatever, but mm -hmm. you know what is when you're trying to sew and you're like looking at your notifications and you're like, stop to answer it. And then it messes up your time. And then you have to stop to answer it. And it messes up your time. Yep. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I can really only check my messages once in the morning or once in the afternoon. That's mm -hmm. it because mm -hmm. it messes up my current flow. And I have, um, I made myself some time tracker sheets um, to log how long I've worked on a project. So that way I know if I'm being profitable or not, because sometimes right. you don't remember how long you've spent Ooh, working on. Something. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And why bother doing this job if you're not making money out of it? Right. So, That's a hard truth. That's a hard truth to keep track of that. Yeah. So <laughs> sorry. I said the hard truth things. Cause you know, <laughs> why not? You know, I was, exactly. I was watching, I was watching that show the other day, the, um, big timber. I don't know if you ever watched that show, the mm -hmm. logging, it's a logging reality show. Oh, exciting. and they lose, they lost a lot of money because they left money. They left uh, wood left over on their claim. Mm -hmm. They lost like a million dollars. What? Wow. But oh. they kept logging. They kept getting out there and they didn't like switch and get a different job to pay their yeah. bill. They just yeah. kept going. Yeah. So I was like, well, if they can do it, we can do it too. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> we want to be profitable. Right. right. Um, and I think we've so all had cases where we have these clients where we think it's going to be an easier job or whatever. And then just takes over our lives and we're not getting paid what, and, and I think there's also like when we're in the middle of a learning curve, I don't want to charge people for my learning curve. You know what I'm saying? So I know that I'm going to be losing money for that job and then whatever, it just kind of evens out in the end. But, um, I love the notifications idea of only checking twice a day. That's yeah. Yeah. Cause honestly, I, it's, you got to preserve your brain. Like right. if you're, I work best in the morning and if I'm wasting time on the computer, Mm -hmm. when my life is good and when my eyes are fresh yeah and I'm not doing my bead work then like I am ruining my day for myself right so yes get out of my own way yeah uh, but I also am aware enough of myself to know that I prefer doing bead work in the morning with the you know natural light and stuff like mm -hmm. that so I think yeah. that's also helpful too because you know sometimes we're not always in a position to be able to choose the client or to choose mm -hmm. the timeline or whatever, right. so you right. have to make it happen. And we're squinting yeah. with a little light at night, <laughs> trying to get something done. Obviously that's not ideal, but if you can learn what works best for you, those, yeah. those kind of systems really, really help me. Right. So, and I um, love so I how you gonna... said, I was cheering cause I didn't want to interrupt, but I was going to say, when you um, mentioned listening to your gut, because what's so cool about, you know, owning your own business is you can be flexible and you can change things of how, you know, for it to work best for you as opposed to what's expected. So, um, I've been talking about like, even like scheduling, how I'm playing with my scheduling. So this next, these next couple months, I'm going to play with a week on week off to try to like, um, uh, 
uh, see if I can, you know, get everything done in that amount of time, <laughs> whatever, and, and, and have like my rest time, whatever. But it's like, if you have that gut instinct that you listen to, um, and being aware of actually what is like productive for you, as opposed to just what you hear works and you're just kind of still going through it and it's actually getting nothing done. I mean, I think we could all be so much more productive if we just work the way that individually, like our bodies want to work for us, you know? Yeah. Oh, that was so good. And the sweating. Yes. Or like the, um, like the lump in your throat when you know, you need to like say something as opposed to when you, it just is amazing what your body tells you. So that was trying to tell you something. And like, um, if you're in a fitting with somebody and you're getting nervous, like check what you just pinned them. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling unsure, like if you notice that one side you pinned more than the other. Yeah. Just double check it. Yeah. You know, like listening to your gut. So that way you're not sitting with the dress later when the bride's not there and you're like, is this right? <laughs> so, but also taking good notes. I feel like notes are hugely important. Mm-hmm. Um, I do a, a note sheet for every, um, every bride, every project I do, I always have notes yeah. for. But, um, if you have a system like a bridal live or a note system that you can add, that's mm-hmm. super, super helpful. So that way you can document any oddities or any unusual things like that's really right. helpful. Anytime you can take something off of your brain's plate, yes. do it. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. used to just sometimes like put pins in things and expect myself to remember what the pin like represented. And I'm like, what? Like, you know, oh, like check that beading or something. And now I have, I know like, and I think too, I talk so much in my fittings too, that like, if it's not written down, it's like, whoop, just gone. So gone. yeah, <laughs> well, and Part of that too, I, so I do definitely do a lot of talking during my fittings to get more information. Um, sometimes I try to ask questions to figure out um, if I need to hem the dress a little shorter, I'll ask questions about like the, you know, mm-hmm. what their venue is to get the right. ground. Right. Like that. So I'm constantly trying to collect. And because of that, I know I can miss things. Mm-hmm. I'll full on forget to charge for a bra cup because it's inside the dress and I didn't remember to see it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember to pin them at the top, and so I can see that I have yeah. that. Because otherwise, I'm like, oh, sorry, I have to charge for that. But yeah, I yeah. To write it down. <laughs> so moral but. of the story is to pay attention to all these things, and like you said, it's an opportunity to just, you know, update your contract or your or your your methods. Um, or I forget what else you said. Um, like your expectations of clients, knowing how to change those along the way. So listen yes. to what your body is listen telling you. That. Yeah. So um, was there um a point when you like, didn't accept, you know, texts at 2 AM. So how did you change your communication with your brides? Did you have like an app that you started using or, or how did that get kind of cleaned up? Um, honestly, there is a lot of time when I had to put a new habit into place. It's like just raw discipline. I just Mm -hmm. have to do a whole turkey, cut it off kind of thing. And, um, even now, uh, if I look at my notifications, I don't answer right away anymore mm-hmm. um, because not everybody needs an answer right now. Right. And that's a hard one, but it also gives yourself space to slow yeah. down and decide how you want to answer mm-hmm. from the realness of your situation too, because sometimes people will rush you and it feels disrespectful and you're like, but they don't know your situation either. So exactly. if you can slow down it gives you a chance to say, okay, they don't know what my life is doing right now. They're not trying mm-hmm. to hound me. They're just trying to get an answer. So what is my actual unangry answer? Right. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to be like, how dare you butt into my life right now? I'm busy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's not usually what people mean. So if you give yourself a, you know, 10 minutes to respond or an hour to respond, you can mm-hmm. usually come up with something that's nice. Cause that's my first gut instinct. I'm like, I am busy. How dare you text me? You know? <laughs> I'm focusing. So if I'm really having trouble focusing, I will put my phone somewhere else altogether. So I can just buckle down into what I'm doing. And that, that is hard because like my phone is also my music player and my video player and all that stuff. So, but yeah, that just had to be discipline for me because I, I know myself the best and I do get distracted pretty easily. So, Mm -hmm. um, being honest with what my needs are is, is really helpful too. even, even um, when I'm at doing a fitting with a bride, I used to pin the hem up like a laundry uh-huh. fold so uh-huh. we could see the edge, mm-hmm. how it will stay pretty. Yeah. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I pin it upwards. I explain what I'm going to do. Yeah. Down at the bottom. 
And I said, but I'm going to fold it like this because I need to see where I'm going to be shooting for. And I, this is what I need for me. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, I travel, mm-hmm. and then they're like, okay, whatever you got to do. So yeah. I've just learned over the years, I'm tired of doing the math, moving things around so that they can see how pretty it's going to look. I'm like, I would rather get what I need information right. wise from this. So yeah. Um, I, that's the only thing I've ever noticed when I have uh, friends that are struggling with stuff, it's because they didn't take time to like really focus on what they needed out of something. And so that's, again, that's where um, anytime I make a spreadsheet to help myself mm-hmm. or, um, you know, put a notification on my phone that hollers at me to order thread once every two months, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. It's just so that I can be better prepared for, right? you know, in those moments like that. And I don't have to worry because, um, I don't know. Have you ever, have you ever done it at night where you're like, Oh, I'll get gas in the morning. Oh yeah. That's like literally always a fight in our marriage. <laughs> yeah. And then in the morning you're like, Oh dang it. I gotta go get gas. And I forgot my husband's like, why do you do this? Like yeah. fill her up? Like, well, and he's also the type that like fills up at the halfway point. So his, his tank is like never. And I'm always like, honey, can you please get gas for me tomorrow? <laughs> You're like on two miles. You just have enough to get to the gas station. <laughs> I know. Oh gosh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like that when you can set a habit in place, it's showing yourself, your future self love. It's showing your future oh, 100%. self. percent mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if you like can even help now, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you're fine. If you can help yourself out now with something mm-hmm. for the future, then you'd be like, oh, thank you for thinking of me. <laughs> like thank you because thank you for thinking of me yes it's like now like my um my weekend routine before I go home it's like I clean so I know that on Monday I'm like oh nice job thanks Nadine or like I'll I'll preload my bobbins you know it's like and it at first it just felt like such a pain like to take those extra steps but those little things to set you up for success you know so that's for like my physical workspace there but there's all kinds of things to listen to what's really happening. And then you can, you have the flexibility to change it. And whether it's like your schedule, or like you said, how often you reply to people or, um, even like how you accept payments, you know, like I remember a few years ago when I switched to like an only this method of payment, it felt like, Oh gosh, I'm going to step on toes, but it's like, actually nobody cared. And my life is so much easier. You know what I mean? And we have that flexibility. It's like, we kind of got to give ourselves permission to like, you know, change stuff. And yeah, wait a minute. You don't take 400 different forms of payment, right? (laughs) That I get to keep track of. Yeah, no, I don't take cash app. I'm so sorry. Right. (laughs) I don't think exactly. I'm so sorry. (laughs) So when did you realize, like how far into your business did you realize, okay, I got to start making some changes to actually like grow with my business. You know, I mean, I feel like you have to kind of get to a, it's like a point and then things start clicking, you know, how far are you in? It really depends on where you're at with your life and with your, with your goals. Um, one of the beautiful things about sewing and the sewing industry is that it's flexible and Mm -hmm. you can do with it whatever you need it to do at where you're at in your life. So if you're just needing to make grocery money to cover some bills, if you want to have a shop, whatever you want to do with it, you can kind of like work with it based on what you're doing. So um, that's where, I don't know, like I said, the beauty of that is because you can flex with things. So as as your goals change, your needs are going to change then mm-hmm. too. Yeah. And, um, everything will follow the suit. Yeah. So like, I think they all, my... all the pieces lean on each other. Right. Um, my mother-in-law, she's a bridal seamstress. So she's really like, has been so, um, influential in my life and led me into this. And so, but you know, she was a mom of five kids. She wanted to sew just to make some extra money. And that was always her goal. And then, um, like it grew significantly, but it was just where she wanted it, you know? And then like my sister-in-law, she, she for a while did alterations cause she has like amazing skills, but she's like, I don't know how much time I want to put into it. So she'll take jobs as her kids have like sports things that come up, you know? And she just knows that she can put it out there, take a few brides or whatever, or bridesmaids, you know, and like that's there. So then where they were at, they didn't have to have these, you know, strict boundaries with their communication because they didn't have as many clients by choice. You know what I'm saying? So, but, and I remember like, I was the same way too, when I was um, still teaching in the classroom and kind of did this on the side, it was like, okay, I didn't need 
certain things in place, but it was once I had to like kind of knuckle down and I knew I wanted to really see this thing grow. That's when I had to kind of, you know, change my policies or my systems. And so is that kind of what you were, that sounds like what you were. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's where, um, I don't mind talking about the, the, the boring side, the metrics. (laughs) I love that stuff because honestly, it's one of those things when you transition from, I I hate the word hobby because whenever people start, they're usually a hobby seamstress and then they transform it into a jobby. I made it as a hobby. Like it was fun. That was like a few, you know, like it just 100%, you have to enjoy it before you're like, oh, and I can make money off this thing. Yeah. Yeah. But there's always that connotation that like, you shouldn't get paid if you enjoy doing it. I'm like, why should I be penalized if I love my job? Like that's ridiculous. Yeah. So I feel like the metrics are one of the great ways to show people the viability of this as a business. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of jobs that always that, that you stay at home moms are, they're like, Oh, you should sell this product or that product. And it's like, not, it's not this, this you can actually make money and do. And that's beautiful. And the metrics really help people understand why you're doing this because you can say, Oh, I made X amount of dollars. Right. Right. And so, um, I know I, like I said, I harp on it all the time, watching your time and your pricing, that stuff is super important because if anybody ever, um, says to you, why are you sewing? Or they want to treat you like it's a hobby job. You'd be like, I have my book of dollars. Do you want to see it? Right. Yeah. And then they'll understand that this is a real job and a real business. Right. Cause, um, it's, it's tough. Um, the only part of seamstressing that's difficult is that people are like, Oh, it's a dying art. And I was like, actually, no, right. I sell every day and I pay my bills with this money. So it's exactly. not dying. At all. Say it again. Yes. 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 But I remember when I started, um, uh, when I went to like my financial advisor for the first time, this was like a few years ago, well, maybe more now. And he asked me, he's like, well, you have to decide like, is this a hobby or is this your business? And it was like, oh, rude. But that made me just look at everything, like the time, what I'm investing, like, you know, in, as investing, you know, monetarily and also with my time and just being honest with myself, because really we do need to start with ourselves to be like, am I really making what I deserve to be making? Or am I being honest about how much this is really consuming my life? Is it worth, you know, the output or input or yeah, my input yeah. <laughs> is yeah. worth the output. So it's like that honesty with yourself is always like, Ooh, so hard. But, um, before we have to answer for other people, like we have to answer to ourselves, like, are we taking ourselves seriously? And do we, you know, see ourselves worth it enough to you know, take ourselves seriously, you know? Exactly. And that's one of the things I am super blessed. And I recognize my privilege at the moment that I'm at in my career that I have made all of the big mistakes already. Mm -hmm. I have, I have royally made some brides mad. I have made some brides very, very happy. Yes. I got that badge of honor. (laughs) To where I feel comfortable sharing my experience to help give some comfort and guidance to people who don't know Mm -hmm. where they want to go with this journey yet, because you don't want to preclude yourself from growing into it as far as you can. Right. Um, right. It's one of those things you're working on. You could work at any job for free, or you can just stay at home and nap for free too. Right. So it's, Right. You, know, you want to make sure you're being honest with yourself and your time. And if you want to do charitable work, that's awesome, but do it on purpose, not like right. on accident. Um, right. Your bride should never come out of your own pocket. Like the money should pay for itself. It's, you know, every, the whole process should pay for itself. You're not, mm-hmm. I don't put my own money into my business anymore because it's, that's the whole point. Like, just very on they're their own ecosystem. You don't have to add any water or add anything. They just <laughs> functional on their own. Yeah. You know, and um, that's, that's a struggle. I do see um, some people will do that. They'll put in so much of their own money in their own stuff and they're not ever really making a profit. And I'm like, there's yeah. just, if you, if you just looked at your time, you would see, mm-hmm. or if you, I don't know, the little tiny tweaks. And that's because I've been there. I have right. undercharged for things grossly. Right. To where, you know, like, you know, when you undercharge, you're like, Ugh, like your gut feels yucky at the end. You're like, I made no, I made no money on that one. Whoops. 
Oh gosh. Yes. Oh, for sure. And you know, we all go through that too, like in our like portfolio years, you know, when we're like intentionally learning and charging less, but then there's a point where it's like, okay, you know what you're doing. You know, we just had a self-evaluation within our membership and it was like tons of questions about like your methodology and like what you're charging and how much time you're spending on social media. And is it actually worth it? You're like all these questions that it's like you to actually take a step back and like ask those questions to yourself. So you don't just continue year after year doing the same thing. And then like 10 years go by and you're like, wait, I just poured my life into this. And like, I don't really have anything to show for it. You know what I mean? So yeah, I love that. So how did you, um, like what, was it easy to start? Oh, I want to know, because I'm thinking about these women who are like, okay, this just sounds so hard to change because I've been doing it this way for so long and it sounds really scary. So is there something in particular that you changed, whether it was like your payment methods or um, your open hours, whatever, or your availability with the bridal shop or whatever that seemed really intimidating. And then once you changed, it was like, oh my gosh, I have freedom. Yeah. It just, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, but it's such an unpopular answer. Oh, Ooh, I'm so intrigued. I'm oh. going to scoop forward. I feel awful. Okay. So since we were talking about honesty and like really, you know, self-reflection, um, I say no a lot more now. I turn down work. I don't want, um, I don't take certain types of stuff anymore. And I don't chase every pant hem anymore. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I know that's a super, super unpopular answer. And if you're just starting out, do all the things that your heart tells you to do. Mm -hmm. Take the vacuum bag zipper. (laughs) Take the Jersey linings. (laughs) Take the weird stuff because it'll help you grow and you'll get that experience under belt. But then you'll you'll get older and be like, I don't need to do that anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't need to do that. There's someone else that can do that. Right. Not. Right. Um, and it's hard even like even hearing myself say that because um, big hearted seamstresses, I feel like we all like to people please. And I get it, but like, that's also super not good for you to do all the time either. So um, it's not my job to make everyone happy. And that's mm-hmm. so hard. Yeah. Because even when it's like, okay, let me find you a referral if I can't do your work, I also don't even owe them a referral. I and know that's, that's hard. so hard. That is so hard. Cause I'm like, let me it actually get so you their hard. phone number and their address. And yes. their- and let me call and grease the wheel for <laughs> exactly. you. Let me take and- them to lunch for you and talk them into taking you on. Yes. And mm-hmm. there's a difference between that because, um, I am a huge fan of community building. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know like all of my local seamstresses who do bridal that are awesome. And if I happen to be online with somebody that uh, needs bridal sewing and I'm not in their area, I'll connect to them with a the person. Right. Because I happen to be in the right place at the right time to like help with that. But yeah. um, I'm not doing it from the same place that I used to at all, where I'm like trying to desperately help every person. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, and it sounds again, it sounds terrible, the person I need to be desperately helping is myself. So that way I can continue to help the brides that I take. Right. Right. And give them a good result. And like I said, anybody who knows me that's watching this is going to be like, can't believe you said that. Because <laughs> it's easy to not do it. But that's, I know that is the honest truth. And that's the biggest mm-hmm. difference you can make to yourself and to your business is to mm-hmm. don't take the stuff that doesn't make you money. Like yeah. Just don't take the stuff that hurts you and right. that takes your time away from the stuff that does make you money. And I almost want to take it a step further because I don't take stuff that I just don't like doing. Like, I really don't like replacing zippers. So don't judge me. Cause I know some of you are like, I love my zippers, but I don't like replacing zippers. And there are just some things that it's like, if you don't, and my mother-in-law taught me that she was like, if you don't like it, you don't need to do it. And I was like, what? I thought it was like my job to prove that I can do everything and I like it. And you're going to know that I like it. And you're going to be like, wow, she did such a great job. And actually Nobody needs to know that and nobody cares. So <laughs> there's always somebody else who will do the zippers or exactly. do the men's jacket cuff sleeves. Mm-hmm. There's always somebody else who will do them and it doesn't have to be you. Right. It really doesn't. Yeah. I had a bride the other day and I'm going to do a story time on this. So I don't want to tell the whole thing, but also I kind of want to decide the whole thing. <laughs> um, but I, I had a bride. Yeah, I know. You can listen to, listen 
to both stories. Um, <laughs> I had a bride bring me a dress the other day and I was excited when she wanted to go with me because she had had a quote from somewhere else. And I was like, ah, oh, nothing must've been cheaper. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like I left money on the table or something, you know, as a joke. And she's like, actually, no, you were a little more expensive, but like you pinned it exactly where I needed the work done. Like the mm-hmm. other seniors didn't address the spot that I really wanted. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. oh okay. <laughs> so it's one of those things, like if you don't like a certain thing, you might not be like, giving your customer everything they want in the product. Oh, that's anyway. a good point. Now yeah. a zipper, a zipper is pretty, you know, just it's either in or it's out. It's, right. you know, there's nothing about that. Right. But when it comes to like a body fit, um, I had a bride last year who super curvaceous, just every mm-hmm. direction, just curves for days. <laughs> and she had gone somewhere else and they pinned her like, okay. They pinned mm-hmm. her like, okay. But I asked her job and I got her vibe and her like life schedule and routine. And I was like, oh, she wants like, she wants like to get in all these cracks. And yeah. crevices here. <laughs> so I was like, okay, we're going to do a second fitting. I'm going to get all the lace peeled off. We're going to do the first part of the take and I'm mm-hmm. going to evaluate it with loose lace. I took it in more after I mm-hmm. saw it with the lace. And from the first time that, you know, we did the consultation with her, she's like, I could tell you understood what I meant. And yeah. I was like, yes. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's yeah. super huge. Uh, if you don't like doing something, if you don't like doing tight fits, they might not come out to the level that your bride wants anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I, so, love I love a tight fit. I love it. I love, I love, love it. Also. And I love it when it's like, let me literally sew it on you. Like the some when there's some pieces of lace where I'm like, you need to put this thing on, then I'm gonna. So, oh yeah, it's just so satisfying. Oh, I just got yes. photos back from a bride who got married in Hawaii, and she was yeah she wanted everything really tight and she just kept finished. I just need it really tight I'm like okay really so we tight. just kept going and going and going but I'm like oh this is so satisfying and she probably yes. could not sit down but she didn't want to sit down so I'm like whatever yes. you want she wanted to have it super super tight for her photos they weren't having a reception they were literally having a photo shoot in Hawaii so I'm like girl you got this so yes. yeah <laughs> that is favorite. so satisfying <laughs> yeah. Now, that being said, I don't mind fitting a bride to whatever degree of comfort they like, but exactly. that is super fun when they, when you zip it up and it's like that good tension and then you just, it's just every, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> it's like, do you want to eat or do you want to have the photos? And so we just do whatever they want, you know, but this particular mm-hmm. one just wanted the photos on a Hawaiian beach. And I'm like, really, you got this anyway. I feel like, All right. Yeah. So you, you're like this wealth, wealth of information and we need to do this again to talk about, we just, we have other topics that we've discussed that we need to cover. So, oh, episode. Sure. but are my final question. So how would you encourage somebody who they're listening? They're feeling super overwhelmed. It is 2022. So, you know, there's that. Um, but they're feeling <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I can't keep up with everything. How do they just take the first step to feel in control again? If you're feeling overwhelmed, like you can't keep up with everything, then don't. Just, just don't. Give yourself some grace. Look at what's on your rack. Put it in order. um, And just go from there. It's one bite at a time for everything. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're having trouble focusing, clean your room for a little bit. Let some fresh air in. Mm -hmm. Clean the tables off, make it nice to work in there, make yourself want to be in your sewing area and just one bite at a time, turn your phone off, just get some sewing done and come back to it from a place of peace later. When you're overwhelmed, you're not going to make good decisions. Mm -hmm. So start with some basic stuff. Do some lining hems. If you're, if you're feeling overwhelmed, do some lining hems. Oh my gosh. I feel like you're like my twin. Like what's happening. That's literally my go-to when I'm like, uh, okay, give me this. And I know I can just like zing, 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 zing. It's, oh. And then I feel like I did yeah. something. <laughs> yes. Do something like, okay. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with writing something on your checklist that you're already doing or that you've already done. Mm-hmm. It still counts as something good that you did towards furthering your goals for the day. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point there's larger topics of breaking up with perfection and guilt and all that stuff, but it all starts with just realizing what's yours to do and what's not yours Mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Like mental, physical, actual work things. Some things we put on our plate are not our responsibility. And that's 
that's a hard one. Yeah. Um, but when you're overwhelmed, don't make any big decisions. Slow yourself down, do some boring stuff, do some cleaning and just like try to calm back down and see what actually is on your plate, what things really are there. Mm -hmm. um, I find that a lot of times if I'm stressed out, out of work, things aren't in my um, you know, it just stuff is everywhere. I got a pile of glitter on the floor right over there right now that I need to finish sweeping up. Like <laughs> anything that's distracting you, get rid of it. Yeah. Make room for yourself to not be overwhelmed. And, um, that usually puts you on the right course Yep. to just see what's bothering you for the most part. Yeah. Also, it makes me sad if people are overwhelmed. So, oh, isn't that the well, worst? It is. And <sighs> I think too, like, <clears throat> I know I had to get to, I needed to have a season where, I did way too much and I knew what my limit was. And it's like, you just don't know until you get there. And then you're like, okay, this is, I can't do this again. You know what I mean? And it's like, if you're in the yeah. middle of that season, that is not your entire career. You didn't choose to live like this forever. It's like, this is a, a rough season. You've learned yeah. like what's working, what's not working. And then it doesn't need to be like this next wedding season, you know? Um, but yeah. I think like you said, what taking that minute to just be quiet and like, do something tedious, you know, like cleaning or whatever to get your mind off it and give yourself that opportunity to talk yourself down. <laughs> Finding a sewing buddy is always good too. It's nice to have somebody that you can just be like, Hey, am I nuts? Can you right. listen for a second? You know, and just kind of get oh, yeah. some feedback because your friends and family are great, but honestly, only a seamstress can really like understand, but frankly, some days only another, I think really so too. Understand. Oh yeah. So yeah. Once that I don't have good really friends. Really yeah. I'm getting your number after this. Cause I'll be probably FaceTiming you, but um, I mean, yeah, once no. you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on some lining hems, Adrian, <laughs> you know where I am right now. <laughs> I think, I think I have space. Let me, I think I have space for another friend. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it does, it makes a huge difference. Once I started kind of connecting with people in my industry, it's like, wow, I'm not alone. And you literally have the same insecurities that I do. And like, that even just that in itself is so freeing for me. I don't know. And then yeah. a lot of it is like, you know, your head well, stuff. Cause then once I, once I take a step back, I can be like, okay, I can actually come in a little bit earlier tomorrow and crank out some stuff and then I'll be okay. But it's like in that moment of overwhelm and the sweating, it's like, you can't see past today or this week or like this wedding season or whatever. And, um, yeah, it doesn't, it's not permanent. So yeah, this moment is just forever. It's not for right now. <laughs> like it's, it's just for like this right now moment. Yeah, like, yes. But it feels like it when you're in mm -hmm. it. And chances are you haven't eaten or drank enough also. Oh, yeah. We can have a whole episode about snacks and the importance of snack breaks, actually. <laughs> yes. When you posted on Instagram, the pretzel, I was like, that's my same, one of my sewing, because it doesn't lose <laughs> green. Oh, so. oh, oh, these? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know, seriously. Yeah. And I do know when I'm like staring at something and I'm like, what is happening? I'm like, oh, I need to eat. Okay. And then I can. Like, what time is it? Oh, I didn't eat yet today. That's yeah. another one. If you put a little timer in your phone to tell you when to eat. There you go. Yes. Something. Yeah. yeah. Changing the <laughs> routines. Well, Adrian, thank you so much. Where can people find you to learn more? Um, I am on Instagram at creatable lady. Um, I also have a Facebook page that I have not attended to lately. So mm -hmm. oh, see, that, poor Facebook is totally like on the back burner for me too. So. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I'm also super DMable, not at 2 a.m. though. Right. Right. You're welcome to message me, but I will respond when I have to. When you're rested. Yes. Exactly. And I'm rested. Within your checking hours, whatever. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so excited. And yeah, we have, uh, we have more chatting to do. So oh, you'll be sure. back. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian, so much. <laughs>